Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning back in once again to Queen Amadai TV Presents Beyond the Realm. I'm your host, Queen Amadai Shakur. And so tonight, I'm going to be talking about the true story of the dog, Annabelle. Okay, so let's get ready to get into it. All right. Hello, Ryan, Spirit Wonder, A.B. the Great, Conscious Outlaw. Okay, Davida, Regina, Queen Candy J, Brother Sly, Judah Queen, Melanated Brown, Zakira, Butterfly 70, Favorable Child. Okay, and all of you, Desmond Works is in the house. Okay, and everyone else who's in the chat. So let's go ahead and get started, people. So I have talked to you all about um, Ed and Lorraine Warren before, who were a husband and wife couple who were paranormal investigators, also demonologists, and basically investigated many stories. Hello, Howard basically investigated many stories such as the Amityville horror, you know, the uh, true story of the conjuring and which Annabelle was uh, like a prequel to that or whatever. And the movie is one of the, uh, that whole franchise is one of the highest grossing franchises, the conjuring uh, franchise. Right. And I do believe the movie Annabelle grossed over like 500 million, if I'm not mistaken. Now, so anyway, with that all being said, let's get into it. So the whole thing started when a woman who was going to school to be a nurse, a uh, 25 year old, she was going to school to be a nurse and her mother, Deidre was her name. Her mother gave her this Raggedy Ann doll, okay? The original Annabelle doll was like a Raggedy Ann doll. So anyway, her mother gave her this doll for a gift, thought that maybe it would bring her peace of mind and be a nice, um, you know, warming gift for her, for her new apartment or whatever. So anyway, her and her roommate, Laura, they started noticing weird things happening shortly thereafter she received this doll. First thing that Deirdre noticed was she would take the doll, you know, she'd get up in the morning to go to, to work or school or whatever, get dressed, make up her bed and just lay the doll on the bed with the arms outstretched and the legs outstretched. And then she started noticing after a few days that when she would come home, the doll was in a completely different position. Like sometimes the doll literally had crossed its legs and had the arms folded, like crossing the arms. So she thought maybe that's just, you know, her imagination or whatever. Um, but then the doll started being transported from one room to another. Like they would come home and the doll's in a completely part of, different part of the house, not in her room, just in other rooms, random places. So they started to suspect that maybe someone is actually entering the apartment while they're going. So they started doing little things to try to set traps, right? Um, like moving the furniture around, rearranging the furniture, you know, putting stuff on the wind, window sills in case the person was coming in through there, like sticky stuff or whatever. So they never found anything. So then Laura, the roommate, her boyfriend, Kyle Rondo, now, they started thinking, they, they all had a discussion and they started thinking, you know what? All this weird stuff's going on with this doll. We need to call in a medium and see what the medium has to say about that, right? So they go and they have this medium come in to talk to them. And the medium says to them that there was a little girl who lived on the property before the apartment building was even built, like years and decades ago. So the little girl died at the age of seven and her name was Annabelle Higgins. And that she used to wander around outside playing and then she died suddenly at the age of seven and her spirit still lingered in the area. And that she had been at the, in the uh, part, you know, the area or the property where the apartment was built. And she never had anyone to play with until they moved in and brought Annabelle. So now the little girl's spirit was supposedly in Annabelle, right? So once they find this out and the lady tells them the sad story of how the little girl died and she was all alone and this and that, well, they start to feel sympathy. And then the lady further tells them, Annabelle wants to know if she could stay here. This is the reading that the medium is getting. She says, Annabelle wants to know if she could stay, if she could just, her spirit could stay in the doll. So they agree because they feel sympathetic for this little story from a little child who died. So they say, yes. Now, I would have burned the doll just so I couldn't buy it. Um, Just so I couldn't buy it. They didn't buy it. Her mom gave it to her for a gift, remember? So here's the thing. That was all a lie. The little girl 
didn't exist. There was no little seven-year-old girl who died and whose name was Annabelle Higgins that lived on the property and wanted to be inside the doll. That was a demon. Now, here's the thing, people. Demons are very crafty and tricky and slick. So what they do is they will often masquerade as a little child or an elderly person, someone who you would give sympathy and empathy to. So you feel, you know, indebted or you feel like obligated to help them. But it was really a demon. It was all just a lie. It was no little spirit of a little girl, right? So that all being said, but guess what happened? By the fact that they said yes when the medium said the child was asking if she could stay there in the doll, they said yes. So you know what they did unwittingly? They literally signed a contract with the demon. So now they've given the demon the go ahead. You know, if you watch scary movies about vampires and things, they say that they can't enter your house unless you invite them in. That's how it is with demons. At the end of the day, when demons want to possess or infest or oppress people, they have to have some type of contract that allows them to do so. And I told you this many a times. I told you that either you have to be engaged in something nefarious like um, weird sexual uh, promiscuous acts or, you know, um, fetishes types of fetishes, certain types of fetishes, um, drinking and abusing alcohol, dr uh, taking and abusing drugs, uh, addicted to porn and those type of things. Those things draw demonic entities. And so other than doing those things, and, and there's many other things you can do, but other than doing some of those things, you have to give them permission. And that's what they did when they said, oh, yeah, sure. The little girl spirit can stay in the doll. Oh, no, that's what I wouldn't have done. So anyway, that's when things got worse. So after this, the boyfriend of Laura, the roommate, his name was Kyle Rondo. Well, he told them after the, the um, medium came and had a seance, he told them, he said, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think you should let the doll stay here. I think it's a trick. I think the doll, he was the only one who was thinking smart. He said, I think it's a trick. I think that the doll is possessed and it's going to start doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And you shouldn't trust it. You need to get rid of it. Well, guess what? When the demon heard him saying all that, huh, well, he had to go, right? So then, next thing you know, they start hearing all these strange noises in the house or whatever. And then one night, Kyle was staying at the house. He says he woke up and the doll was hovering over him. It quickly rushed on and latched onto him, grabbing him by his throat and started choking him. And try as he might, he could not get it off. He said it was like hitting a brick wall, like trying to push a wall. Well, you know why that is, don't you? Because demons have superhuman strength. So, of course, he couldn't get it off. Okay? So, with that all being said, when the people, uh, Deandra, the woman who lived there and her roommate, Laura, when they came in, they saw that he had, like, scars, you know, like welts, like scratches on his body. And he told them that was from the dog, right? So... At this point, they knew they had to do something about it. Here's another thing, too. They came home from work one day, the two roommates, Deidre and Laura, and they found the doll had something that looked like blood on the hands of it, and on the chest was like three streaks of blood. So now that, along with what Kyle told them happened to him, they decided they need to do something about it. So they went to a priest. And they asked him if he would come and perform an exorcism. Well, the priest, instead, he contacted Ed and Lorraine Warren, whom he heard of from all the, you know, stories that they had, you know, uh, investigated for paranormal activity. So as soon as they came to the home, they said that it was infested with, with demonic energy, energies and entities. That's what they immediately said. So they started doing their investigation. And then that's when they, you know, they told them, they said that was no child. That was a demon. That's when they told them the demon tricked you. And so they had the priest, they actually called the priest, Ed and Lorraine, once they knew, because remember, Lorraine was clairvoyance, you know, because some people said, you know, like when you hear stories about this, some people were skeptical, the people who don't believe in that kind of stuff and think there's always a logical or scientific explanation. They were saying that by the fact that Lorraine and Ed, as soon as they showed up, they said it was absolutely a demon before they did any investigative work. They said they were skeptical. Let me tell you why they didn't have to do any investigative work likely. Because Lorraine was clairvoyant. She had a sixth sense. People like that, they can feel the presence of demonic energy. They can tell when the toxic environment that they have infested a certain space. And so that's likely how she knew. 
But nevertheless, they once they realized it was a demon, they called the priest and asked him to come and do an exorcism, and which he did. And so then they decided to take the doll with them at the girl's request because they didn't want it in their home anymore. I don't know why they didn't just burn it, but they didn't want it in the home. So Lorraine and Ed left with the doll. Now, mind you, they had a museum in their home of all the possessed and haunted things they collected from all of the different investigations they had conducted. So they took the doll to their home and they decided they're going to put it along with the rest of the collections. They made a case for it, a glass case, and they had a note that said, please do not touch at all. Right. So one day this young priest comes by their home and he looks at the doll lying there in a chair as they were about to put it in the case. He picks it up and looks at it. And he starts laughing. And he says, uh, Annabelle, you're just a raggedy Ann. You're just a raggedy Ann doll. You can't hurt me, body. And he tosses it into the chair. Ed, Ed Warren told him, please don't do that. So when the man left, before he left that house, Lorraine told him, make sure you are very careful driving home. The reason she told him that is because she knew that when they had left, Tony Curtis said it was the spirit of Lil Nas X. Cut it out. So the reason she told him that is because they knew that on their way home with the doll, i.e. the demon, they had it in the back seat and their car was just going all over the place. They almost had several fatal collisions just in the short distance that it took them to get home. I mean, well, it wasn't a short distance, but you know what I'm saying. Just in that one trip, it felt like the brakes were going out. Ed lost control of the car. And the only way that they made it home safely is because Ed pulled over to the side of the road, took out holy water and threw it on the doll. And then they said after that, they had a peaceful journey. So she knew that because he had thrown the doll, the priest that is, the young priest, this wasn't the same priest who did the exorcism, mind you, because he would have known better. This was a young priest who came to visit them, I guess, out of curiosity and wanted to see the things that they had that they claimed were haunted or possessed. So she knew that he had angered that, that demon when he said, you can't hurt anybody, you're just a dog. So she told him, drive home carefully. She said, I have a vision. Because remember, she's clairvoyant. She says, I have a vision of a near fatal car accident. So please be careful. So as he's driving home, he gets into this really bad car accident. He loses control of the car. The brakes completely went out. The car was totaled. But luckily, he survived. Okay? Okay. So that is real crazy, right? So with that all being said, till this day, you know, they had the doll put in the glass case. And like I said, they kept it there. And, you know, now that they have passed on, their, um, I think it's their son-in-law is in charge of the museum now. But I will tell you something. If it were me, I wouldn't have kept any of those things. But here's the thing, though. I want you to pay attention. One thing that Ed and, and um, Lorraine said is that a demon cannot possess an inanimate object, which it can't. So the demon didn't literally possess the doll. The demon was only using the doll to carry out its nefariousness. Like it was literally moving the doll and putting blood on the doll and doing all of those things. It was actually making the doll be able to do those things. It wasn't literally in the doll because demons don't look for inanimate, inanimate objects. They look for human that they can control and possess, okay? That's what they were looking for. Remember, I told you all before, there's three stages of demonic possession. Now, you remember when Lorraine and Ed walked into the house, the first thing that uh, Lorraine said was that the home was infested with demons. It had already started the infestation. And I told you, the first stage is infestation, the second is oppression, and the third is full-on possession. The infestation starts when the demon enters the dwelling, and you start seeing things from the corner of your eyes, and you look, and there's nothing there. You start hearing scratches in the wall and growlings, and that's another thing. Ed and Lorraine said that when they brought that doll into their home, they would hear growlings, right? And that's one thing that you hear from demons. And they said that the demon, the doll, would not be where they left it. It would be transporting around the house, the same as it did with the girls. They said one day they actually went into a room and it was levitating above a chair. These are the tricks that they do. So when you start seeing things like this, here knocking, you go to the door, no one's there, growlings, things being moved from one spot to another, that is infestation. The demon has now infested itself in the dwelling. 
And then the next stage is oppression. It will start to oppress whoever in the dwelling is the weakest link. And it will be angered by anyone who tries to speak against it, like with Kyle Rondo, who knew that it was not a little girl spirit, who knew that it wasn't anything friendly. He looked at it more so like an evil voodoo doll or something. He knew that it was something wicked. Now, he didn't know specifically it was a demon, but he surely had sense enough to know it was something that was up to no good. And that's why he was against it. And you see the doll, the demon tried to kill him. Okay. So these are the things that happen. The first thing is the infestation, then the oppression, where it starts to get someone who may be depressed going through something. And then they start having suicidal thoughts, talking about killing themselves. Life's not worth living right or it could be a happy couple who just got married all of a sudden they start having all these arguments and bickering and just things are going downhill anything to cause chaos because remember in pandemonium because remember the word pandemonium when you break it down right pan meaning all demon is in the middle of that word all demons pandemonium right nothing but chaos and again i remind you that demons cannot reside in a peaceful environment so they are always going to cause havoc and chaos all right so that all being said that's the story of annabelle the doll my cousin stayed in a dark room for months before killing herself she was possessed because she threw because we threw away a ouija board and it was back in the house i went home wow that's crazy those things absolutely do happen so I hope you all enjoyed that tale. With that all being said, I'm going to conclude this broadcast. Thank you all for tuning in once again to Queen Abadai TV Presents Beyond the Realm. Stay tuned because tomorrow night I will have another spooky, nefarious story for you. And I will also be going live tomorrow on the root of all evil. Okay? So are cursed objects hard to get rid of or is it just that TV? Hard to get rid of. Let me tell you something. They're hard to get rid of if there's a demon attached to them. Now, if it's just something somebody just cursed or whatever, you can just throw it away. But if it's something that has a demon attached to it, oh, it's absolutely hard to get rid of. Absolutely. Okay. And here's another thing too. Let me just tell you all this. How do you know if your home or dwelling a place is haunted by a demon? I'm sorry, haunted by a ghost? or if there's a demonic energy or entity. I'm glad you asked. Here's the way you can tell. You see, a ghost haunts a specific place. Like a house can be haunted. There's a ghost in the house. There may be more than multiple ghosts. When you leave, the ghosts are not going to follow you. The ghosts are just going to be in that house. But if it's a demon, you can pack up and move out of that house, and that demon's going to pack up and move with you. As you should know by the story that I told you all, the true story of... Um, the entity, right, where the woman was getting molested and sodomized and raped and all that stuff by the demon. And when she moved, that demon still was taunting her because it moved with her. That's what demons do. That's how you can tell the demon, the difference between a demon and just a spirit that has gone into another realm. Because the spirit will haunt the place, but it will not follow you from one place to another. Much love, Queen. Thank you, Miss Tony, for your kind words and your contribution, beloved. Peace, love, and blessings to you. So with that all being said, Millie says, exactly, demons are transferred. Absolutely. Susan Bullock says, I read the book. Tony Curtis says, I think I have a male demon next door. <laughs> oh, maybe you need to get you some holy water, Tony. Okay, so with that all being said, I'm going to conclude this broadcast. Thank you all for tuning in. And for those of you who missed tonight's live, on Queen Amadaya TV presents More Than Meets Your Third Eye. Please make sure you go back and watch that, okay? I was talking about the salts, the salts of salvation and how that pertains to the zodiac, the medicinal zodiac. Please watch that. Very informative, okay? And so that all being said, I will talk to you all again soon. Peace.